speaker of his own accord, that it is a revelation that is revealed to him. What does he say in the hadith? Right? Think about this now logically. The Prophet is telling you that wealth does not decrease with giving charity. I'm watching money leave my pocket. I'm watching money leave my bank account. I'm watching my numbers go down. But the fact is, that's not reality. The reality is what is with Allah. What is with Allah. And Allah is telling you that your wealth does not decrease by giving charity. Rather, it increases. Because the reality is that ultimate account. Right? Right? The real bank account. The account where there will be no bailout. The account where you cannot deal in toxic derivatives. The reality is that we have an account in the Akhirah. What are we putting in through our Amal al-Hasanat? What are we taking out through our sins? We hope that that interaction we hope that that interaction on that day, Alhamdulillah, insha'Allah, we have a zero balance. Bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least, at least, I'm not in debt when I show up. At least. That's on a monetary level. Giving. But there's another level, which is even harder, especially in the times that we live in, which is to give from our time. To give from our time. For some people, wealth is easier for them. They can write a check. But maybe we need something from you. We need from you your knowledge. We need for you the success that you've had in running your business. In management of people. In developing people. Human resources. You're a human resource officer at your company. But yet we see human resources being squandered in our communities. We don't need your money right now, walillah, alhamd. We need you to come and share this knowledge and share this wealth. Give us some sadaqah. A different type of sadaqah. One that is, has communal effects longer than the 5,000 or the 1,000 or the 2,000 that would be used during Ramadan to repave the parking lot. Alhamdulillah, we'll deal with some potholes. But we can't deal with communities that are not seeing human beings being groomed, brought up to the potential that lies in every single one of us. So sadaqa. The second one. The second point. And also, Afwan, this idea of sadaqa. This idea of sadaqa that the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith, what did he say? It's a proof for your iman in a monetary sense, or in a sense of giving. I believe, I'd like to see the masjid move forward, I'd like to do that. So what does the Prophet ﷺ say? Challenged in a hadith. Was sadaqatul burhan. He said, He said in that your charity, your giving is a proof of your iman. Because it's easy to say, right? What do they say? Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Where's your proof now? Back it up. The onus is now on you. Right? We can all talk lofty talk of things we love to do. What are we doing? That's the question, right? What are we doing? So for us is to hold the mirror up to ourselves and ask ourselves, what am I doing? Now, this second idea from charity along this idea of being truthful is this idea of, as we said, sidq, or truth, or correctness. Being true, or truthful, genuine. The person who works with this correctness and works with this truth is called sadiq. Is called sadiq. Naam? And what does Allah speak about in this, or the Prophet ﷺ, with regard to this idea of sidq? Alaykum bi sidq. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Alaykum bi sidq, fa inna sidqa yahdi ila al-birri, wa inna al-birri yahdi ila al-jannah, wa ma yazal al-rajulu, yasduqu hatta yuktaba inna Allahi sadiqa. Be honest. 
Be honest. Because honesty, honesty guides one to Jannah. Be honest. Be honest. Right? And there was a man who said to the Prophet I came to him and asked the Prophet I cannot give up certain actions. I cannot give up certain actions. I cannot give up certain actions. And the Prophet asked him about being truthful. He said, will you be truthful to me? Will you be truthful to me? And he said, yes. So then the Prophet when this man would commit these actions, he would ask him, did you do such and such? Did you do so and so? And now he had sworn himself to truth and through this way, through his shyness, in front of the Prophet, in his shyness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was able to leave these acts. By commanding him just to be true. Just to be truthful. Right? Be truthful. So in this, that these acts of truth, truthfulness, sorry, leads to Jannah. And a person does not continue his life being truthful until he is written in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah already knows, but rather that one is then uh, confirmed, if you will, of those who are truthful. Right? Habituating ourselves on an act so that we become described. We become described by that act. That's a truthful man right there. That's a truthful woman right there. Right? Habituating ourselves on it. Because honestly, as Imam Ghazali or Imam Shafi mentions, Allahu Alam in the line of poetry, that, that is a miracle. A miracle, Ya Nafsi Anti Turidina Al Mu'jizat Allahu La Yuridu Minki Illa Al Istiqama. O Nafs, my ego, you long, you long for miracles. You long for miracles. But Allah does not need miracles from you. What Allah is desires from us is istiqamah, being steadfast and upright. Because a miracle, as one of my teachers said, a miracle is to take a blameworthy character trait, such as lying. Replace it with a praiseworthy character trait, such as telling the truth. And remaining on that character trait until we die. That is a miracle. Because now you have changed the sayyat, an action which is yani, uh, uh, displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to one that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward is everlasting and will last longer than being able to walk on water or fly in air or all of these other things that the nafs, the ego is desirous of. Miracles. What will the miracle do for us on Yom Qiyamah? Has no value. But what does telling the truth at all times in my life have for me in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being written from those people who are truthful? And then the converse is true. Iyaka wal kathab, he said. Woe to you. Warn you. I warn you of lying. I warn you of lying. Because a person continues lying. A person continues lying until they are confirmed as a liar. Because lying leads to the hellfire, sorry, because lying leads to the hellfire, and no person continues to lie until they are confirmed with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amongst people as a liar. We seek refuge in Allah from being confirmed as a liar. Subhanallah. So we have, as we said, this first point we have charity, then we have being truthful. And then, if a person is giving charity, and if a person is being truthful, I would then want that person to be my friend. We get the word sadiq. All from the same root. Sadaqa, sadiq, or sid, now we have sadiq. I would want then for that person to be my friend. And what does Allah talk about this, or the Prophet ﷺ talk about this? So I said, if someone has these qualities of being true or truthful, then we would not want, would we not want to take that person as a friend? No. No. Because I want to benefit from the qualities that you have. I want to benefit from your truthfulness. I want to benefit from your honesty. I want to benefit on how I see you giving charity that I wish I had that way. But by being with you and seeing how you do it, inshallah, it will manifest in myself through dua, through asking, through habituating ourselves to these things. Now.